Good afternoon, and welcome to Jeff and the Rabbi. Well, the flowers are blooming, the trees are getting greener, and accusations of man-made global warming, wait, scratch that, it's freezing in Atlanta, climate change is in the air. It must be springtime. Now with springtime comes March madness, hay fever, and of course, Passover. Now the rabbi tells me that all the core beliefs of Judaism are derived from the Pesach story. Wow. With that in mind, you would think us Jews would be really selling this holiday to the tribe, big time. But in reality, it really seems like the Goyim have done a much better job in marketing Easter than the Jews have done with Passover. The Christian children get to go out and search for pretty Easter eggs to put in their wicker baskets. The poor Jewish kids have to help their mothers search for hummets to put in their waste baskets. The jolly Gentiles get to snack on chocolate Cadbury caramel candies and a surplus of succulent sweets while their chosen counterparts are forced to munch on a mishmash of matzah and moror. The young descendants of Abraham must dress for Seder and be on their best behavior, while their retail shopping neighbors get to wear pretty bows in their hair, eat bologna and mayonnaise sandwiches, dance around in their best church-going floral dresses, and meet the Easter Bunny. I get it. It's hard to compete with a religion where they call the day that their Lord was crucified Good Friday. <laughs> It seems like the Christians really nailed Easter. Oh. Yep, I said that. So Rabbi, put the excitement back in Exodus. Put the significance back in Sinai. Put the hype back in Hebrews. I could keep going all day, but I think you get my point. Tell us why Passover is about more than four glasses of wine and grandma's overcooked gefilte fish balls. Help us through this one. Holy moly, they were dropping acid last night. Like, where did they do that? You know what? I, I had a long night last yes. night, all by myself. He's like exploding here. Wow. I was all by myself for a long time. It's on fire. Man. Okay, I don't even know how to follow that up. It's, it's a toughie, isn't yeah. it? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, so all the beliefs, that's what you got, you know? Yeah. Everyone does Passover. You're going to have Passover. You're going to have a Seder. Everyone comes together to Seder. We have this elaborate Seder meal. It's got the four sons, of course. And this is the one thing we all do. Every every level of Judaism we do. Break the matzah. Raise the cup. We all talk about how we were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. A lot of stress on the slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. A lot of stress on the freedom. Big deal about freedom. Let's see. You know, that's yeah. that. So we have this Seder. And... As a matter of fact, there's even a commandment. It says right out in the Torah that you shall tell your children on that night saying, because of this, God did for me when he took me out of Egypt. I think it's really important for every parent to communicate to their child. All right, all right. question is, what? I've always had that question. What are you supposed to communicate yeah. to your child? And, you know, the, the pressure's on. This, you is know, tough. this is sort of like your kid's getting ready to go away to school. And, and you, you're supposed to say something like really wise right, and, and right. earth changing. What do I and say? Like, like, um, like, don't do anything stupid. I think I used that one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I did use that one. Right. And the parents are, okay, the kids are, come on. Like, you know. <laughs> anyway, so what are you going to do? What are you supposed to say? So it turns out, it turns out that everything that we believe as Jews comes from the Passover story. That's, a, that's, you know, that's I guess Everything. if you think about it, that's, that's a lot to say. That's a lot, you know, that that's a lot of big. pressure on us here and, and given and, a Seder, too. You know, you don't, you don't think everything from Passover, everyone will tell you what's it about, freedom and all that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's way, way, way deeper than that. Now, what's the key line? The key line is in, not in the story of the Exodus of Egypt, but it, I guess you'd call it the end of the story of the Exodus of, of, from Egypt, which is the Ten Commandments. Right. The opening line of the Ten Commandments is, as you know, you know this. Wait, is this the Charlton line. Heston version? Or Charlton Heston version. Okay, good, yeah. Right. Yeah. What's the first line? Uh, I am. No, no, that's a. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. You got. That's the first line. However, the immediate follow-up to that line that's really not the whole line mm -hmm. the whole line is i am the lord your god who took you out of egypt mm -hmm. brought you out of egypt brought you forth from egypt whatever you want to say right now you know if you would have just said like i am lord your god and everyone's like whoa 
oh, he's big and, you know, he's God. He didn't really have to say anything more than that. That's a good point. Yeah. But he said, I'm Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. He could have opened with the, I am Lord your God who created everything. That would have been a big one too. You know, yeah, I a am. Bigger than Egypt, right? I am. You're not. I am. You know, something like that. You haven't done any of that stuff, right? Like, of all the introductory lines, you know, God gives you, here's my card. It says, God. And underneath it says, who took you out of Egypt? Yeah, right. It's just not, okay, I, that's impressive, it's but it's big, not right. as impressive as the, the, you're right. the light and the darkness and things like that. You're right. It's big. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. But like, you know, I am God who created everything, who owns everything, who, who gives life. Good point. Yeah. But, you know, I am God. All life is mine. You know, something like right. that. That would have been pretty big. But instead he says, I love you guys took you out of Egypt. So the reason for this is that when we look at the story, when right. we analyze the story, you come to believe. The story teaches us everything that we believe about God, about us, about the world, about people, about everything. It's all there in the story of Egypt. So wow. he says, I'm Lord your God, who took you out of Egypt, because study that story, it's all there. Okay. Oh, okay, let's take a look at it. What does it mean, it's all there? What does that mean? What does that mean? So, first of all, we know the story. God came to Pharaoh. Pharaoh didn't want to listen. Moses says, let my people go that they may serve me. Okay, so, first of all, beginning of the story, Moses goes into Pharaoh and he says, let my people go that they may serve me. That means God says, I want the people to come worship me not Pharaoh. Right. Pharaoh didn't like that at all. God says, if you read the story as it is in the Torah, God says to Moshe, the son, Moshe says they're standing at the, the burning bush. And Moshe says, how will I know? And God said, when they worship me on the mountain, then you'll know. It's a really God. neat line. When they worship me on the mountain, then you'll know. Meaning, until the end of the story, you won't, know. you won't know. But I'm telling you right now, this is going to end with all the people worshiping oh, so me. He's giving, he's giving that way right here. He's telling that, that's how it's going to end. This is how it's going to end. And I'm telling you, and when it ends, like I like I called it, mm -hmm. when it ends like I called it, then you'll know. So just stick with me. Play along. I like right? That. I like Play that. along. And when you get to the end, then you'll know like, hey, this is it. I called it from the very beginning. I'm sending you to Pharaoh and all this stuff that we're going to do all along the way. But in the end, this is where we're going to be. Wow. And therefore, the proof is that I've been calling the whole game. If it gets to the end and it ends exactly as that means like every play along the way, it's also. Right. Because they got the whole thing choreographed. And, if, and when you, you'll know that nothing just is by chance because when it gets to the end that I called for, that means everything along the way was me. Okay, so now he goes into there and he says to Pharaoh, you know, I want to go worship God. What does he start doing? He starts to do the Ten Commandments. The Ten Plagues, I'm sorry, Ten Plagues first. So he goes to the Ten Plagues. Now, what do we see from the Ten Plagues? What do we get out of the Ten Plagues? Like, what is God like, you know, blood and frogs and lice and all this stuff? What's, what's he trying to show everyone with all this Ten Plague stuff? Yeah, but you would think is at first we think, well, he's trying to show the power of God. I'm, I'm more, I'm stronger than your magicians of, of Egypt. I'm, I'm right. more powerful. That's I'm, right. Originally, I'm thinking. totally in control here. As a matter of fact, I'm in control of everything. Think of some part of the world that I'm not in control of. Think of any part. Name a part. What part do you want? Animals? I'll do an animal right. thing. Water. How about the heavens? Oh, how about if I do hail? Uh, you have water? Yeah. I'll do water right here. Fire? I'll do fire. You name it. The Good people? Point. You want the people to die? I'll do whatever. There is no part of the world. So from there we see that God's in total control. If God's in total control, how can he be in total control of something? You know, nobody is in total control of this world. You know, just try. You know, everyone's always trying to like you know, stop the river from flooding or, right, or right. try to stop a hurricane right. sometime, right? You know, no one's in control of the world. In order to be in control, you must have been the one that built it. Like Apple, good you know, point. you right. build it and you keep the little, keep the key. Right, right. You got the key. You can do whatever you want. Right. With it. No one else can. The one that can 
is the one that's got the key. That's the one that built it, because he's the only one that's got the key. You can make things happen natural, you can make things happen unnatural, because you've got the key, you can do anything you want. Right. See, he, ha he must have been the builder. Right. He right. must have been the builder. Okay, now, he's the builder, so he built the whole world. Now, is anyone else, maybe someone else, he's sharing power with? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because the Egyptians, they tried everything and everyone. Not a single god, no one's standing up to him. Right. right. Okay, now, if he made it, where did he come from? Where'd God come from? Just, this only give me one answer. He was just always there. There's no one, he couldn't have come from somewhere else because if he came from somewhere else, then he would be beholding to that thing. So he has been around since forever. Okay, now, how about the fact that he can do whatever he wants? But does he want to do whatever he wants? Does he care about what's going on in the world? Well, clearly, yes. That's what this story tells he's you. He's getting right down into it right Right here. down to details. He's even like he's got, he's, you know, picking a fight with his pharaoh. Right, right. And he says exactly, you know, he's really, really interested in detail. True. I'm going to call it, I want it's going to happen at such and such a time. You know, stand here, do this, do that, and this is how it's going to happen. He is right. involved. So we got God who is total control. The creator, in total control, doesn't share power with anyone. No power sharing no. arrangements. No one can like stand up to him. So he's one and only, in total control, been around since forever, cares and is in actively involved in what's going on. Right. Okay, how about some other things? How about, does God interact with people? Well, it seems he yeah, definitely certainly does from this story. Right. And 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 when people don't do what he wants, what happens to them? It doesn't work out well for them. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Reward, punishment, big time. Just ask right. Pharaoh, right? right? How's it working for you, Pharaoh? It worked too well. Here's oh. the choice. God says do this or you're gonna get that. He doesn't do this, he gets that. Yep, every time. Smashes yep. him, right? Yep. So God is so God does reward and punishment. It means he's interacting with us. Right. On the other hand, he tells him, Don't worry, the Jews, I'm gonna take good care of them, I'm gonna bring you on, you're gonna be wealthy. And as a matter of fact, you know what? You're gonna be wealthy because I really told four hundred years ago. I told your great, 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 great grandfather that I'm going to get you out of here and you're going to be wealthy. So I've, I've been doing this thing a whole lot. Point. And, and I made a promise then, and I loved your grandparents. I knew them so well. I loved them. I'm going to take good care of them just because of you, just for them. And, and therefore, I like the ones I like. And the ones that I don't like, I don't like it. If you mess with me, you mess with me. If you not, no. Okay. Later. Now, how about prophecy? Do we hear prophecy from this story? Yes. He prophecy. He called it from the beginning. Yeah. He said what's going to happen. Actually, as I just said, he, he prophesied. Moses, he right. going to tell Moses, and then, you know, you're going to worship me on the mountain. And even before that, he told the Abraham that the children are going to be in a land not theirs. And they're going to go out with great, with great wonders. So you see that there is an idea of God communicating into this world. He communicates with right, this world. Right. Okay? <clears throat> then, there's also the idea of God has a specific set of requirements or demands. How do you know that? Because he says, I want to take you out of Egypt for what purpose? To worship me on the mountain. That's why you're coming out, because you're going to worship me. Right. First time he goes to Pharaoh. Send my people, you know, they always they skip this, right. a lot of selective quoting, right. let my people go. Right. That's a partial quote. It only wasn't out for like three days or something too, right? Wait, it's really, right. let my people go that they may serve me. All right, okay. Well, That's the whole I think Cecil will be the middle kind of guy, right. broke that down into a better drag line. So it's good, you got it. Like, would be bad. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's See, guys, I'm just trying to like let him go. They're like, oh, I feel bad for them. Let him go. Let him go. Let him be free. No, 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 no. Let them go that they may serve me. Right. If they're just supposed to, if it's just for them being free, eh, you may as well have them, Pharaoh. But I want them that they may serve me because I think they'll be better off serving me than serving you. Right. But the whole idea is you're going from someplace to someplace else. You're not just going to nowhere. You're going to someplace else. And where are they supposed to go to Mount Sinai? What happens on Mount Sinai? They're going to find out how to serve me. This is how I want you to serve me. No part, 
know this, do that, put up a sukkah, don't eat pork, you know, and all the good stuff. All the rules and regulations. So God prophesies. Okay, now, there's another idea that we really believe in. We believe in the coming of the Messiah. Right. We believe that there will be a coming of the Messiah. We believe in this idea of redemption. The whole Egypt, Exodus from Egypt story, is the story of redemption. It's a story that things can be really rotten, stuck in a place, and yeah. all of a sudden it can be this earth-shattering upheaval that can turn everything over and you can be redeemed. Right. You're not consigned to suffer forever. There is a point and a redeemer can come. It's Moses. And by the way, there's a great line. God says to Moses, there's the back at the um, burning bush. Mm -hmm. God says to Moses, Moses says to God, when I get to Egypt, who should I say sent me? Who should I say right. sent me? Like, what's, what, how do I introduce you? So God says, tell him, I will be as I will be sent you. Okay, that's his name. I will be as I will be. Well, that's a pretty interesting no. name. I will be as I will be. Like, what does he mean? So the way that our sages interpret this is, I will be with them now, and I'm, I will be right, right now in all your place. I'm there. I'm there for you. I'm there with you. I will be, and I will be with you in the future also. Okay. Meaning, there's going to come a time after you get out of Egypt, you're still going to be back in a messed up situation. I'm with you then, and I'm going to get you out of there too. Wow, okay. And that tells oh, us right. that the world, that the Exodus from Egypt was the prototype, and the world is moving towards... And that model we're going to use in a larger situation somewhere down the road. And that's why the whole world believes, as we mentioned earlier, right. that we're headed to the promised land, and this whole idea right. of, like, I'm going to the promised land, and, you know, I'm going to be free, and I'm... And not just be free, I'm going to be free and I'm going to go to the promised land. And I'm going to be led by a Moses to the promised land. We believe very much in that. It's become a very universal concept. Judaism know. believes in it. Where did that come from? Exodus from Egypt story. Wow. So yeah, all this is it. chock full of everything <clears throat> here. Everything that Jews believe in, everything that we look forward to, um, the existence of the Torah, why did God take them out of Egypt so that they could so he could give them a Torah? Why did what do we see about God? We learn everything we know about God is just by looking at his MO in Egypt. Right. The whole sort all of our fundamental beliefs. And Maimonides enumerated thirteen fundamental beliefs the Jews believe in. That's their the basic the thirteen right. cardinal beliefs. And all of them, Maimonides, Nachmanides, they all trace them back to the story of the Exodus in Egypt. Wow! So it's it's, it's everything. So, so yeah, it really is. So if you read, if you really study this Exodus story, you're pretty much going to get the whole Jewish thing now. You then kind of down you got this story inside now. And you you integrate that story. You believe in all the cardinal beliefs of Judaism. So now, wow. if you're sitting, if you're sitting at the seder, right? You want to talk to your kids and communicate to them. So then you can tell them like. What do we understand, like about God? Like, like to, let's describe God. If you only knew Him from right. this one right. episode, what would you say about God? Like, what would what would let's let's describe some 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 things, some some fat features of God? Yeah, well, you just mentioned them all. He's right, all powerful, all knowing, compassion, caring, and involved in our daily lives. So that's when you get ready to lead your uh, seder. I'm already. I got this right here. Right. I'm using this. You, you, you get ready to lead the seder. So let's just have a let's let's, let's we got the story right. We all review the story. Right. Go through all the story like in detail. Right. Get it all down. Everyone's got it. Right. Okay. Now, what it is if God is the director of this whole thing? Right. What does it tell you about? And then people start to think about it, you know? So that's it. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna use yeah. this. There's no doubt about it. And you see how many see first what you want to do is take out you can find this anywhere. You can Google thirteen uh, uh, thirteen uh, beliefs of uh, Judaism, right. or, or my, they call them the thirteen beliefs of Maimonides, just because he wrote them up as thirteen. Mm -hmm. But um, the thirteen beliefs of Maimonides, or they're printed in many of the popular prayer books. You can always find them usually after the morning service. Read through them, okay, 
And then you do your Passover story, and then you ask people, start asking people, like, like, what do you get out of this? And see how many of them you can find there. It's actually pretty good. And you'll actually find all 13. Uh -huh. That's pretty good. Yes, you might, I guess, you know, my satyrs kind of wander a little bit. They kind of go, you know, like the wandering Jew. We just kind of wander all over the desert. Right. This actually might bring me back to a, a core talk, <clears throat> talking point here. Is that, right. It's a good point. Everything about... Everything about God you can pretty much learn in this story. So it's really everything about Judaism. Right. Like, take, I'll take one really, really popular one, real popular issue. Is God really involved? You know, the many, many people who believe God exists, but they don't think he's like really involved. He's really, I've heard that. You know, yeah. Did God really pick the final four? You know, like, right. does God really right. care? So, you know, like he's God, but, you know, what I do today, now, yes, and, uh, you know, people, many people don't believe in that. Well, what do you think about what do you what do you think from the story of the Exodus from Egypt? Think that's true or that's true? Is God involved or is he not involved? He's pretty involved there. I mean, you couldn't get any more detailed involved than that. Right. I mean, he's every detail of that story is involved. In. Right. So that's that's one that tells you right there. You know, does God communicate to man? Well, it seems like he does. You know, yeah, God's there, but he, we don't know what he's thinking. Oh, I don't know. He's, Seem to be communicating pretty well here. Right, so that's, yeah, that's and good. on and on and on. And you can wow. knock them off one after one of the other. This is going to be a pretty good seder for yeah, me this year. Get to work. You do a little bit of homework. I'll you, I'm going to probably take all the credit. I'm just going to let yeah. you know that right now. And I Go appreciate your it. help, but I'm going to take all the credit. Go for that's it. That's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, uh, I like this. This is good stuff. Okay. This is seder building material right here. This is the, this is the real thing. That's right. It's all in the story. That's right. And I don't mind even letting out all this information yeah. because that's what the conversation is supposed to be. I like it. And we got yeah. the information. All right. Next week we might have more. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. See you then.